Okay, good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? Um, yes, but I think it echoes. So I hear your voice. Yeah, I, I experienced the echo. I just um, um, turned it off. I hope it's better now. Um, right. Um, you see myself uh, logged in twice. Um, you know, we had these problems um, with our um, uh, with my internet connection uh, with my laptop PC here. Therefore, I had to log in uh, twice um, just to have a backup system in case um, the problem has not been resolved um, so far. Just a second, there's still a small echo. No, it should be out. Okay. So in case that there are any problems, I will disconnect and connect and take over with the uh, with the tablet. Um, so I'll be back again. <laughs> okay. So good morning, everybody. I welcome you to this week's um, lecture in um, our topic um, as advanced sustainability um, and life cycle assessment. Before we start, um, just one announcement. Uh, we will have next week um, guest talk in this um, lecture. Uh, Mr. Nathanael um, Ko, um, who worked formerly uh, with um, the University of Stuttgart, will speak about a very interesting um, topic in which he did his uh, PhD, or is doing to be precise, he just handed in his thesis, um, and he will present his work on justice and the assessment of justice in um, sustainability and life cycle assessment. Topic which fits very well to the topic we have today here uh, with um, social LCA. Yeah, so this will be very interesting um, and will be next week. Um, due to some requirements which we have to meet, um, the lecture will start a bit later than usual. So we will not start at 8.30 but we will start at 9.15, yeah? So I announced this already in the um, messages section on Moodle, um, but I just wanted to announce it here. Yeah, we will have then his um, guest talk. We will have the opportunity to speak with him. Um, yeah, you may also inquire with him how it is to do a PhD in the field of life cycle assessment and to work in this field, yeah, these people at, Gab, uh, at the University of Stuttgart are those who um, elaborate together with Sphera, the um, consulting um, company, the um, uh, life cycle assessment software Gabi. Yeah, so this is from a topical perspective, but also yeah, from um, from a, yeah employment perspective, probably something which could be interesting to you. All right. Um, yeah, so I'm very happy that we uh, were able to win this, uh, this speaker um, there. Today, um, I want to speak with you about um, social LCA. And I will start with sharing my screen. Green. Just a second. Uh, here we are. Can you see my screen? Not yet. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, so topic of today is um, social life cycle assessment. Um, 
to have a start, um, we will speak about first, yeah, what should what you should take away, uh, take away from this lesson. Um, I will motivate it um, then um, and um, speak about then yeah, what we understand under the term of social life cycle assessment. We will go through the individual phases of social life cycle assessment and compare here always um, how this relates to the classical life cycle assessment, yeah, where it is similar, um, but also where we find differences. And um, yeah, in the fifth point, I will give you a short case study. Um, this is, we will look at um, um, yeah, the production of roses in Ecuador and in um, the Netherlands and um, have some insights on this social LCA before I summarize um, today's lecture. Um, you have seen it um, today, we have 58 slides. Um, therefore, I have to speed up a bit. Um, yeah, when I'm not coming through, uh, we will um, take up um, the topic um, then um, in the end to complete it. But um, yeah, usually it should, should work out. If there are any questions, please, yeah, as usual, do not hesitate um, to ask. So um, what should you take away from today's lecture? Um, yeah, you should be able to define what social life cycle assessment is about, um, explain the individual phases. Um, yeah, you should understand where the challenges are in um, social um, life cycle assessment um, and where it um, therefore differs from environmental LCA. And yeah, to sum up, yeah, as a conclusion, you should also be able to discuss the applicability um, of it. Right, um, to have a start, um, I have here two examples. Um, yeah, the one is Nike. Um, yeah, probably most of all, all of you know who Nike is, the country, um, um, a sports fashion um, company, um, yeah, which has multiple contractors. Yeah, when you buy some shoes from Nike, yeah, you find that, well, um, a nice sign where it is manufactured. Yeah, it is not manufactured in the US usually. Um, yeah, a contractor of Nike is um, Saga Sports um, and um, they um, used child labor um, yeah, to produce the shoes. Um, my question to you, first of all, is um, yeah, you come from different backgrounds and so on. What do you think? Um, yeah, what is the problem with child labor in general? That's instead, they don't have the education. Right, they don't have education. What does this lead to? Where would you have ended um, or be today when you would have no education or less education? It will affect the overall community standards, maybe. The overall community, right. But also, in particular. Yeah, which no uh, profession, less salaries. Um, but uh, like some of them criminals or something, I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah, so you affect the individual prospects of the yeah, child um, to develop, yeah, to unfold all its capabilities, abilities, yeah, to develop a life 
yeah, which we are able to live here. Um, yeah, it has yeah, drawbacks for the society, as you said. Yeah, since um, yeah, you have a huge amount of people probably yeah, which are not yeah um, developing their potentials yeah, for the community to affect the health maybe yeah of the children um, yeah depending on the working conditions yeah so this is really um, something which is um, yeah severe yeah for the children however um, yeah why do you think is child labor carried out it's carried out out of necessity maybe they have to help their families because they have a bigger family so the bigger brothers go to work or sisters and maybe they simply don't know other alternative in that case right so when yeah they contribute to the living yeah which is problematic in many cases um of larger families yeah this is the point yeah which you have to see um yeah what do you have yeah when yeah or when you have a trade-off between somebody going to work yeah helping to feed yeah in many cases really literally um yeah the family yeah against this um education um yeah right what is the problem why is yeah, child labor in this contractor, a problem for a company like Nike. Why should Nike care? Well, I think at the first moment we could say that the reputation uh, matter, but is also related to uh, what you say. So you say that you're a responsible company, that you care about sustainability and social issues. And then you have in your value chain, kids doing the tennis shoes and the clothes that are really expensive, that are selling mm -hmm. really expensive. So you also have an imbalance, a lot of imbalance of the price of the costing when you're producing in, because you're using this type of labor. Mm -hmm. And so I think a lot of problems actually. Somebody to add to this? I think not only the image, probably that's a big part, but also some legal issues, because as far as I understand, there are like some rights for the kids and especially big enterprises like Nike could could be charged somehow by hurting this right. Right. Yeah. So you have the one point, yeah, of course, legal obligations um, just last week. Yeah, in Germany, I have it on the next slide. Um, I think, yeah, we had um, the adoption by the German parliament on the so-called Lieferkettengesetz, the supply chain law, yeah, which makes companies liable, yeah, for what is happening in their upstream supply chain, um, yeah, regarding issues of, um, yeah, social, uh, social aspects. Yeah, this is the one point. On the other side, um, yeah, this image problem um, is severe, yeah, as you see in the manifestations on the picture. Um, yeah, when you pay a lot for um, a pair of sneakers, um, for example, yeah, or when you pay, yeah, let's say 40,000, 50,000, 100,000 euro for a car, yeah, you don't want to get blamed by your uh by your friends by your family um for um uh, for supporting a company yeah which exploits people in the value chain yeah, imagine yourself yeah driving a tesla or so um yeah you want to be the clean guy probably when you do this um yeah having such a nice yeah and uh, carbon free at least in the advertisement car yeah, you won't get don't want to be blamed by your friends for support
supporting yeah, some child labor in a mind yeah, to build the batteries for it. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, Nike got to know this um, here in this case. Um, so and yeah, they have it probably in their general um, general bylaws, so to say, and um, withdraw from the contract. However, um, yeah, and this is indicating somehow the problem. Yeah, and the consequence, yeah, the contractor had to fire, yeah, then 4,000 workers, which are dependent on, um, yeah, the contracts with Nike, which left then, um, yeah, um, households with 20,000 people, um, yeah, without work. Yeah, which shows one of the dilemmas. Yeah, I, please don't get me wrong. Yeah, I'm not saying, well, we need child labor, but you need to be careful, yeah, with your, um, with your conclusions, yeah, to not harm the wrong people with them. Yeah? So um, question is, yeah, I said we have the dilemma um, here. Do you see any alternatives to just um, firing the people? I don't know, like instead contribute to the education and at the same time, perhaps give them the possibility to still kind of work. Uh, yeah, but then you still have the problem that the children work. But I think that is yes. more a system problem, like a governmental problem. Uh, yeah, if the system is not like so, um, I mean, it's a necessity. So many families need to do that and you cannot avoid that. I don't agree. Maybe. I, I, so, uh, sorry. sorry, Natalie, <laughs> sorry, go. The contractor could... I could also pay more um, to, the, um, um, to the labor force and therefore the children do not have to still work and they could go to school and the contractor could pay for it to, to uh, yeah, uh, contribute that the children have um, education and I, for, of course, needs to pay more than to the contractor, but I think they have the money. Right. Yeah, so you have to take care that well, the families of the children have their living um, yeah, and that you they can yeah, earn probably more. Yeah, you can put pressure on the um, on the um, contractor. Yeah, that they end their yeah, child labor here, and so on and so on. Sorry, That's I have a question. Options, but there is um, somebody who raised the hand. Is it me? But I have a question about. No, uh, continue. Uh, go ahead. Oh, it was me, but I was going to say the same thing that Natalie just said. Okay. Oh, I see. Yeah, I have a question about the, uh, the amount of income that a child will bring to their family. Because just saying give the parents more money is a possible solution, but it, it, it is dependent on the amount of money right because it isn't i i don't think it is easy to say to just uh, increase the income just like that and uh but um, I'm, I'm not sure if a family is um like humble enough or maybe it's even more greedier and sends the child to another place to work to get even more money i'm not sure so how much money is the child is usually making over there because the families are some families are kind of, yeah, sending their child to, to work for monetary reasons. 
yeah, this was not a patent recipe. Um, yeah, um, I, I was presenting. It was just, um, yeah, we were just speaking about directions in which one, one could think in order to overcome the problems. Yeah, of course, yeah, the question is when, when they pay more, yeah, do the children still go to work? Yeah, this has to be, yeah, you have to think about many aspects here um, in this regard. Okay. Um, second example, yeah, I mentioned this, um, yeah, um, last year when we elaborated this unit, um, yeah, they were already speaking about this Lieferkettengesetz. Um, yeah, this year it has passed the parliament um, now. Um, yeah, companies are um, held more liable uh, yeah, um, for sustainability issues in the, the supply chain. Uh, yeah, one has to say there are already companies doing this. Um, I don't know who reads um, the um, weekly newspaper, Die Zeit, um, yeah, in last week's issue. Um, there was an article on uh, small and medium-sized companies, um, yeah, like Deuter, a company producing nap um, backpacks, um, for example, and others, yeah, who are already um, aware of these um, things, and even though they are not obliged to consider them because they are too small, um, yeah, they follow um, already this due diligence in their um, supply chain. On the other side, yeah, one can criticize the solution found, yeah, as nobody is going really to be sued and held liable. Yeah, yeah, that is not going far enough or yeah, as far as necessary. Um, however, yeah, this is something which is becoming more and more important, yeah, to become transparent in um, the supply chain, um, yeah, customers demand this, customers yeah, don't want to get blamed yeah, for uh, social misconduct in the supply chain um, yeah, of precious goods um, they, they, um, they buy. Um, however, this is something which is really difficult um, to see um, and to follow. Um, since you have often the point that it is difficult to know well what is happening really upstream in your supply chain. Yeah, often you do not go to the yeah, mine um, of an ore and buy the ore which is molten then to the metal which you use. Um, yeah you go somewhere to a metal exchange or you go to a wholesaler um, yeah, of metals and you buy the metal there. Yeah, and the question is where does he um, get yeah, the metal from? Um, yeah, and this is becoming more and more difficult. However, yeah, both examples shall illustrate something. Yeah, you need to identify where do we have social issues in our products and services? And yeah, how can we make them transparent? How can we make them measurable um, in order to be able to, um, to do something against it? Yeah, and doing something against it becomes, an, yeah, as I said, difficult. And this is the topic of um, social life cycle assessment. Um, yeah, in the concept of um, these assessment methodologies, we look at um, here in this lecture, um, yeah, it is the third pillar. Um, yeah, it's a pillar trying to address social issues um, in a sustainability assessment. Um, yeah, and um, in similar um, to life cycle assessment, um, yeah, one says where well, we follow a similar approach here um, and um, focus here on social impacts. Yeah, and this is what I we spoke about this uh, um, graph 
um, at the beginning of the semester is why people sometimes yeah, distinguish or speak of the life cycle assessment we know as FAR, yeah, as environmental life cycle assessment to pronounce the difference yeah, between focusing on the left pillar or focusing on the right pillar, yeah, the social aspects. All right. Um, so social life cycle assessment is an expansion of the concept of life cycle assessment, yeah, looking not into the assessment of the environmental impacts, but the social impacts related to a product in its life cycle. It follows in general, yeah, similar methodological phases. It is closer here, yeah, to the normal life cycle assessment than the life cycle costing is, which we had last week. But of course, we have some differences here. Um, comparison to environmental life cycle assessment, there are no guidelines and standards yeah, up um, to this point. Um, however, yeah, like the discussions we had on um, life cycle assessment, um, yeah, the CETAC and uh, the United Nations Environmental Program in their life cycle um, initiative tried to develop some guidelines and this was when you recall it yeah also the first step in the elaboration of uh, the lca um, standards yeah so um, in 2009 um, yeah both institutions in their joint life cycle assess um, initiative um, um, published in the brochure you see on the right hand side um, yeah the results of their efforts to reach a consensus of how um, social life cycle assessment could be um, could be done this was only a first and quite rough approach leaving a lot of um, significant methodological problems open. Um, this was the status when we elaborated this unit um, last year. Um, unfortunately, um, yeah, we just came across the point that later last year, the same initiative published um, a study um, which, uh, yeah, with the year 2020, um, which um, proposes a revised version of these life cycle standards. Unfortunately, yeah, when I just say we just came around this notion, yeah, this was in preparation of uh, Rosina and me, um, yeah, for this week's um, edition when we already uploaded everything, yeah, we were just able to have a look at it. Um, yesterday, um, therefore, this is not yet reflected um, in what I'm presenting. Um, yeah, this new guidelines um, from UNEP um, CETAC, um, yeah, take up the discussions which have been um, carried out, yeah, from the year 2009 on. And um, yeah, brought them together with the general descriptions, um, the general approaches of social life cycle assessment. So it's not a revolution. Yeah, it's just summarizing um, yeah, the status from 2009 um, and um, resolving some of those issues which needed to be clarified. Um, yeah, you find here the link, you may have a look into this. Yeah, the following still um, yeah, focuses on the discussions as they were before um, yeah, this summarizing report was made. 
What has also been done in this report was um, to um, correlate or reference further um, yeah, the impacts um, from a social perspective yeah, to the sustainable development goals. Um, and um, it um, introduced besides the social LCA, um, the concept of social organizational LCA, yeah, which was, has not the focus of a product um, or a service, um, but the product on the focus of the, um, um, the organization. Yeah, so when you're interested, please have a look. Um, yeah, but um, yeah, we just show um, as we show in the following. Um, yeah, what life cycle, social life cycle assessment was uh, or is about. Um, yeah, in general. Um, yeah, where this the final recommendations put in this report are not taken up. Um, how does social LCA look like? Um, when you look into these phases, um, first of all, in general, uh, what are the differences here to, um, um, to the normal environmental LCA? What do you think? So Mr. Singh says it seems to be the same. Would somebody like to comment on this? Um, maybe it would be like the, the system or how you do it is very similar, but it's the type of data that changes. I mean. Mm -hmm. Right, so the system itself looks um, very similar. Yeah? You, get, you have the same building blocks um, here. Yeah, they are not arranged in the order um, which we had um, yeah, with this bi-directional um, arrows and so on. Yeah, but this is just the graphical representation. Yeah, so the steps remain the same. Um, yeah, the point is, um, yeah, in, in general, you define in the goal definition what is to be assessed in the scope definitions. Um, yeah, how you perform the study, you calculate, uh, collect data in the inventory analysis. Um, yeah, you translate the inventory data into the impacts. Um, and then you interpret. Yeah, so this is in general the same. However, yeah, we are looking at something different here. Um, and therefore, yeah, we have some, some differences when we look further. Um, yeah, this does not apply yeah, to the interpretation, which is mainly um, the same. And therefore, we focus in the following on the first four phases. When we look into the goal definition, um, yeah, we usually want to assess the social impacts. And so everything centers around the question of how yeah, human well-being is affected by these products or systems yeah, throughout their life cycle. So we focus here on yeah, one particular area of protection, yeah, which is human well-being. Yeah, and this covers um, all stakeholders of this life cycle. Yeah, as we look in the environmental life cycle assessment on the environment as a whole, yeah, we look here at 
humankind yeah, or stakeholders involved. Um, yeah, any person who is affected or feels affected by some activity in the life cycle. Yeah, these could be the workers. Yeah, but this could also be local and regional communities or the users. Right, yeah, so this is in general. Yeah, of course, we may have some more specific questions, but the general focus is yeah, social impacts on well being. How would you define well being? What do you think? Um, you have like physical, how you are physically, how you are mentally, uh, if you are feeling well, eating well, mm -hmm. if the society, everyone's in the same pay, there's a lot of things <laughs> related to well-being that you can go for physically mm -hmm. and mentally, for example. Yeah. Yeah, so we we speak a lot yeah these days about uh, the effects of the pandemic, yeah, and when you think about um, children yeah in their homeschooling, um, yeah they through homeschooling they are safer regarding um, yeah their well being in physical terms uh, regarding the um, regarding the um, COVID um, disease infection however um yeah the question is yeah, is this really then well-being yeah when you think of well being isolated from their friends not going out yeah being forced for example to stay in a small flat yeah, with sometimes yeah, violent families or wh whatever. And yeah, there are a lot of factors which um, affect well-being and which have to be weighted um, yeah, against each other. Yeah, and this yeah, leads to a central point yeah, in the scope definition. Yeah, here we, yeah, like in the environmental SEA, define the impact categories. Um, and the question is really how do you define well being? Yeah, physical health, psychological aspects. Yeah, but also the subjective feeling, yeah, is something which is, which is important. Um, yeah, how do you define this? And we come to it later, then, yeah, even more difficult. Yeah, you can describe the influencing factors here, um, but how do you measure this? Yeah, physical health, yeah, this can be probably measured. Yeah, for psychological aspects, you may have some hints, yeah, but. Yeah, a subjective feeling is really hard to measure. Okay. Um, yeah, so the one approach is um, yeah to find really quantitative measures. Yeah, and this is what is done often. Yeah, well-being is income physical health, housing, and so on. Of course, these are factors describing this somehow. Yeah, but this is not really sufficient yeah, to describe really how well you are. When you describe, follow this descriptive way, however, um, yeah, this becomes difficult to measure. The approaches here to assess human well-being um, are therefore um, yeah, threefold. 
um, yeah, one uh, central approach often used is uh, so-called normative compliance, where you look into some conventions from organizations. Yeah, the um, their standard or minimum requirements on um, social aspects. Yeah, from the International Labour Organization or for the from the Global Reporting Initiative. Um, yeah, and these are checkbox things mainly. Yeah, you can say, well, is child labor excluded? Yeah, check or not check. Yeah, is there a freedom of association? Um, yeah, in trade unions for the workers. Yeah, check or not check. Um, yeah, this is. Um, yeah, it's something you can easily check, but this is not really scientifically based measuring well-being. Yeah, because this is these are results um, yeah, from long political negotiations. One can go then into the social sciences. Um, yeah, in, interpret social theory um, yeah, regarding well-being, um, yeah, making use of them. However, yeah, um, it is difficult to really, yeah, when you think to the back to the environmental mechanism we spoke about in environmental life cycle assessment. That to follow this cause effect chain, yeah, the impact pathways. Yeah, and really measure what this is about. And um, yeah, the last point would be, yeah, to consider also co creation, um, yeah, the involvement of stakeholders. Um, yeah, to integrate them in order to acknowledge, yeah, that the affected stakeholders probably know best what influences their well-being. Um, however, yeah, while we um, have this first one, yeah, which is the most easiest um, to apply, but scientifically probably the most questionable one, um, yeah, this co-creation is only partially discussed theoretically. We follow now the line of these most commonly used approaches. And um, yeah, what is this about? Um, yeah, you see here, um, yeah, some of these aspects covered in the um, ELO uh, working standards. Yeah, focusing on non crime discrimination, freedom of association, exclusion of child labor, and so on, on the worker perspective. Looking at the societal perspective, which we spoke about also, yeah, focusing on corruption, yeah, the support to development and investments in the society, um, the acceptance in the local community. Um, and um, yeah, how far the company is committed to um, concerns. Um, and um, um, finally, um, finally, the product uh, product uses, um, um, yeah, how far this integrates um, here. Just to Just a point. Um, I would kindly ask you, um, yeah, in the coming five minutes, um, to um, to have a look at these two slides here in the scope definition. Um, on the one hand side, and on the um, Example impact pathway here and um, discuss, uh, compare 
these approaches here, yeah, in um, the social LCA in comparison to the environmental LCA. Yeah, and to work out, yeah, what are the main differences? Yeah, and how far this really, yeah, um, suits, yeah, to follow the goal to um, determine the impacts um, from a social perspective. Yeah, so the one thing is how yeah, does these impact categories here defer to the environmental impact categories you know? And um, yeah, how does this mechanism, yeah, this impact pathway here defer? And how far this approach is really um, yeah, leading to the, the leading the path towards um, fulfilling what um, uh, what uh, the purpose is. Yeah, I would say um, discuss uh, think about this um, for um, um, for some five minutes. Um, and we will um, yeah, uh, discuss about this um, then. Question clear so far? All right, then we um, see each other in five minutes.
Okay, so what do you see here in comparison to the um, environmental life cycle assessment in terms of these categories um, and um, this environmental or this impact pathway? I think that the stakeholders um, are more precisely differentiated than in the um, usual LCA and the quantification um, is another topic um, of difference because we do not have quantify in and outputs in this case, or we cannot do it, I think. And therefore we rather focus on qualitative measurements like that than quantitative ones. Mm. Right, uh, the, these are the yes and no questions, um, yeah. Um, okay, the stakeholders are probably comparable, yeah, to the uh, environmental compartments, um, yeah, like soil, water, atmosphere, and so on, yeah. You have worker, society, product, user, uh, but, but um, yeah, the other thing, um, uh, yeah, but this is, yeah, we do not speak of humans yet or their health only. Yeah, we speak about um, other issues and differentiate um, them further, right? Yeah, maybe one remark and what I meant with stakeholders is that we do not usually differentiate whether this impact category really affects the local people or um, is um, affecting mm -hmm. the whole society, okay. if, if we could do so. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, but this is something yeah where you can also make a differentiation regarding the specific study you take. Yeah, this is then um, goal dependent. And for the um, example impact pathway here, um, yeah, this is the example for child labor. Um, yeah, what is the difference here um, when you compare this to the environmental mechanism? Anybody? We focus here on yeah, one area of protection only, yeah, which is um, the overall well being. Um, and we have then, yeah, mainly single indicators, yeah, which we use um, in their contribution um, directly to this overall well-being. How far, this was the second question, does this contribute to the overall aim of um, measuring the social impacts along a life cycle? Or where does this yeah, Could you repeat the question, please? Um, how far do we meet yeah, with this approach here, um, the goal of measuring the social impacts? Okay, uh, how, I mean, how uh, accurately or how well can we actually say we're measuring the well being here? Maybe that's the question because I, I'm not really sure yeah. I understood it. So, 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 so the point is that, uh, yeah, this goes back to the, um, to this part. Um, yeah, we check here mainly, yeah, do we comply with some things saying, well, yeah, does this occur here or not? 
Yeah, then <laughs> really measuring the um, measuring really the well-being in itself. Yeah, following these social theories and so on. Yeah, it's somehow a simplification. Yeah, one uses yeah what one can measure. Um, yeah, we come to this um, um, in a minute. Okay, um, as in environmental life cycle assessment, we also distinguish um, yeah, between attributional and um, consequential social LCA. Um, yeah, the point is, um, yeah, that um, while well, one can really apply um, this yeah, measuring the social impact, um, but this is, yeah, as I described just um, on the previous slide, problematic, yeah, since it is in many cases just this check, yeah, does this apply or not? It's not really measuring the magnitude, yeah, the performance regarding the social well-being. Um, yeah, however, this is, yeah, then when you, the system you consider is quite, uh, quite clear. More often, you try to look at the consequences um, regarding social impacts yeah, of a decision. And um, here, uh, yeah, we have one central difference in social LCA in comparison to environmental LCA um, that, yeah, and usually you have um, the decision. You, you do something in environmental LCA and then an impact occurs. And when you do not do this, yeah, the impact doesn't occur. And this is something which is different in social LCA. Yeah, where you have these trade-offs we spoke about in the field of the child labor, but you could say, yeah, trade off between unsafe working conditions and unemployment. Yeah, you produce with this company in this country and so on, you create jobs there. Yeah, but these are unsafe jobs, yeah, having negative impacts. On the other side, when you do not invest there under these conditions, yeah, you have other negative effects, which could be unemployment, yeah, like in the Nike um, field. Uh, this is a central difference between um, social LCA and environmental LCA, and that the no action option may have negative effects itself. Okay. Therefore, yeah, the consideration of consequences here is often made in a way <coughs> that you look at the difference between the impacts of doing something. Yeah, this is the upper row on not doing something. Yeah, you look at the impacts, yeah, when you extract material for A, when you produce A, when you use A, when you dispose of A, and subtract, yeah, the case when you do not do this. And so you have a delta consideration here, yeah, not this absolute delta. You also don't have this um, clear um, relation between um, the process and the impact. Usually in an environmental LCA, um, yeah, you have a database which you can use. And um, here you have a close relationship um, of, um, yeah, between carrying out a process and the related impacts. For example, in the iron and steel industry, you melt iron in a blast furnace. 
Yeah, you need energy for it. For the energy, you have a specific mix and you can, yeah, then calculate the impacts um, associated to it. In social LCA, this relation is weaker. Yeah, the melting of the iron and the workers' right to organize in labor unions yeah, are not directly linked. Yeah, the iron may be melted yeah, by workers who have the right to organize in labor unions or by those who have not the right. Yeah, this depends on the conditions in the country or the conditions in the company or in the organization um, they work in. Yeah, so we have here in the one case in environmental LCA, um, yeah, this strong relation. Um, and um, in the social field, yeah, these impacts are rather related to the conduct of a company. Um, yeah, or yeah, when this are uh, um, yeah laws in the country or so to the uh, to the country. Okay, so this is a graph which should um, yeah, exemplify this a bit further. Um, yeah, the, you have a broad range, yeah, where you have some yeah, social and environmental impacts which are stronger linked to the conduct of a company. Um, yeah, and others which are stronger linked to the nature of the process. And this is somehow a gradual process. Yeah, with the work environment and its safety, yeah, is more limit uh, is more related to the nature of the process than the ILO violations, but less, yeah, than the resource use. Okay. Um, the question is, yeah, how can we then measure these impacts? And here we come to the adaptation in social LCA of allocation. Yeah, we need ways to allocate these social impacts, um, yeah, to the processes which we carry out. And usual approaches are here the working time. Yeah, where you say, okay, when company yeah, has ILO violations um, in place, yeah, then we look into the working time of a company and measure yeah, these social impacts um, yeah, by the ratio of the working time, yeah, which is needed for the process, which we look at in relation to the total working time in the company. When we think, yeah, that, for example, yeah, work safety of people working, yeah, in a steel plant uh, matters, yeah, this is one of the approaches which is we often taken. Another one is, yeah, when it's a general involvement and we want to relate it here, um, yeah, to go to the value creation. Yeah, and look into the total value created by a company, um, yeah, and the share, yeah, created in a specific um, process. And we multiply this, yeah, with the social, total social impacts in the company. 
this approach clear? It's yeah, the adaptation of um, the allocation um, yeah, to this um, uh, specific case of social access. Mrs. Uh, Mr. Aleman, please. Yeah, I have a question regarding the social impacts, the total in the company, then how do we calculate them? Don't we need the social impact of the process first? Yeah, this is a this is a point. Um, yeah, I, when we say well, the social impacts do relate more to the company in general. Yeah, where we say well, the company has a share of ten percent of children employed. Yeah, or cause has a situation of work safety which is terrible and so on yeah this is nothing which we can calculate in the way we did the calculation in environmental lca yeah where we have the process flow sheet um yeah the process model and calculate then uh, the total impacts by adding up the individual process impact yeah, but we have this approach in general. Yeah, when this, um, and then we allocate the, um, and the impacts, yeah, to a process or a product um, through this allocation factors. Of course, yeah, when it is possible to, yeah, have, yeah, something like this, yeah, this dependence of the impacts on the performed processes. Yeah, we can do the calculations as you suggested. However, this is often the case, uh, of not the case, um, but we are more often in the right corner here. Yeah, that social impacts, yeah, are related to the company in general. Yeah, and then we need this allocation. Is this understood? Yeah, it's just, it's a little too abstract for me, the social impact of the total company. Yeah. Is that like a fraction or is it like a percentage or what is it? Uh, which it, it it's a percentage. Yeah, it's a, the ratio here is saying, okay, when a company yeah operates yeah eight thousand hours a year yeah and has let's say a hundred uh, hundred um, persons yeah so we have eight hundred thousand um our working hours um, per year yeah with a impact on the right hand side and you can allocate then yeah, for this process, for example, a hundred or let's say 800, um, um, 800 um, hours. Yeah, then you have 1% of the social impacts which can be attributed yeah, to this particular process. Okay, now I have a better idea. Yeah, okay. Uh, thank you for your question. Okay, um, then um, the 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 question is, um, yeah, how do we um, count then? Yeah, for these um, de decisions we take in uh, in a um, consequential social um, LCA. Um, yeah, when we try to assess the consequences of a choice yeah, to do something um, yeah, through a process, um, yeah, then um, we have to compare this again yeah, against the option that we do not perform this process. Um, yeah, and the point is that we should try to include all social consequences of the decision here yeah, to come up with the 
um, overall um, assessment. However, um, yeah, this is really uh, hard to measure. Yeah, here we come to really a, a frontier of application, um, yeah, which is still not really clear. Um, okay, we have often the problem that we have to um, decide whether we use an indicator, which is quite intuitive and easy to use, meaning yeah, that we can and can easily determine the data versus a yeah, really accurate indicator, which is describing the impact yeah, really sufficiently. Um, yeah, when we look at the question, how do we measure, for example, the discrimination towards workers? Yeah, an easy hands-on indicator would be um, yeah, to look at the share of male and female workers. However, yeah, as we know, even from Germany, um, yeah, the share of female workers or females in um, the boards of directors um, or whatever, yeah, is not really a good indicator to look how um, or yeah, the share of female professors uh, in universities and it's not really showing whether we have a discrimination in place um, or not. Yeah, there are much more effects to consider. Yeah, what do those people have to give up to reach this per, um, positions? Yeah, do they reach the same payment level um, and so on? Yeah, much more accurate would be yeah to carry out in-depth interviews, data collection, yeah, with workers. Yeah, how far are they discriminated? Yeah, because we have much many more dimensions of discriminations here. Yeah, this is these days we are speaking a lot about um, uh, orientation of um, people, um, yeah, um, cultural background of people, um, and so on, and how this is, yeah, really, yeah, how are people with a different um, sexual um, orientation or uh, with a different cultural background are yeah, treated yeah, are they discriminated and so on? Yeah, this is would be the much better indicator here. However, yeah, you would have to carry out a much more difficult data collection, and you would have to yeah, spend much more time on this data collection. And this is a trait of the really frequently see in um, measures for social LCA. Question is also, um, can we reach objective indicators? Yeah, is it possible to really um, measure in an objective way, yeah, working conditions? Yeah, without speaking with stakeholders? Yeah, um, or yeah, is it important to speak with them? Yeah, to see well how satisfied are they? Yeah, the left hand side is again easier to determine. The right hand side has a problem. Yeah, that you have little data available, and it is difficult um, to. Um, obtain it. Okay. In the inventory analysis, um, yeah, we um, uh, 
has two types of indicators, which we look at process indicators and result indicators. Process indicators um, yeah, look into the formal quality of a management system, for example. Yeah, you look well, do you have a system in place to avoid discrimination? Um, for example, um, yeah, and you think, well, when we have a strong system in place, we can expect less discrimination to happen. However, yeah, just to have a management system, strong management system is not really guaranteeing success. And therefore, one can look also at result-based indicators um, and look, well, how many incidents of discrimination did actually happen. Yeah, this, yeah, when you have no discrimination incidences, yeah, you could argue, well, we have no discrimination. However, and unfortunately, yeah, the practice has shown this. Yeah, only that there is nothing reported or we have low reported incidences doesn't guarantee a low number of incidences. Now the conclusion is you need both. Yeah, you need a strong management system which yeah, hopefully guarantees that when there are incidents, yeah, that they are reported. Yeah, the, and that this system is lived. And when the system is strong and in place and is lived, and you have no reported incidences or a low number of reported incidences, then you may um, argue yeah, that uh, there is really little or no um, discrimination in place. Okay, um, regarding data collection, um, yeah, social aspects are often something which is um, very specific for a site. Yeah, so we need site-specific data, but also, of course, data regarding the boundary conditions. Yeah, like monitoring agency, socioeconomic conditions, um, the national and the regional regulatory framework. The point is, yeah, that it is often possible yeah, to do such a study then for the um, for your own company, but that yeah, data on these issues yeah, for the second and third tier in the supply chain are much more difficult um, to obtain. Yeah, companies do not want um, to pass um, information here yeah, to their supply um, uh, on their suppliers um, and customers. And yeah, when you buy something on the open market, it's difficult to trace back. Yeah, there are efforts, yeah, trying to um, make it compulsory. Yeah, I spoke about the Lieferkettengesetz in Germany. Um, however, um, yeah, there can be done a lot. Okay. Um, Further, um, yeah, regarding um, inventory analysis, um, yeah, how can you approach the problem of the availability of data? Um, there are some databases of um, social impacts. Yeah, social hotspot database, for example, um, is um, one uh, one thing. Yeah, where you can rely on 
social audits of many companies which are already existing. Um, yeah, where you as a practitioner do not have to go through every company in your supply chain by yourself. However, um, yeah, it is yeah, often difficult to really um, yeah, get notice of really um, yeah, sensible um, data here and to um, make it public. Um, So what is done often is um, yeah, to relate the indicators to the nature of the process. Um, yeah, and this is something I showed you already with this um, allocation um, yeah, to link yeah, the value creation um, yeah, to the lifetime in a population, for example, um, yeah, which brings you the um, advantage that you can um, relate the process um, um, uh, or that you have a process related an indicator which you can use to measure the impacts. However, yeah, it is really questionable whether it is possible to, um, to capture really the essence of this assessment, yeah, the social impact um, in such an indicator. As I said, um, yeah, there exist um, some databases yeah, like the social hotspot database, you may have a look at it, um, yeah, which um, publishes yeah, for sectors and countries um, social impacts. This is really nice to see. Um, and then you can well, use on average data yeah, for that sector and for that country to see whether you could expect a problem here or there and whether you should have a closer look at this, at your suppliers yeah, in this sector or countries. Yeah, the point is, yeah, that this average data is, yeah, average data, yeah, and your individual supplier can be much better or can be much worse um, than this um, data set in this database. All right. Um, just a second. Um, right. So um, usually um, in life cycle assessment, yeah, we have these in regarding the impact assessment, the steps of classification, characterization, normalization, and weighting. Um, yeah, normalization and weighting are the same steps as in environmental LCA differences we find regarding um, classification. Yeah, classification means yeah, to assign inventory flows to impact categories. Um, yeah, in environmental LCA, we select here the impact categories and yeah, collect inputs and yeah, assign them to these impact categories. Um, in social LCA, yeah, we start as well with the selection of the impact categories. Um, but then define indicators to measure these um, selected impacts and collect the data yeah, for these impact categories. Um, yeah, this is yeah, the point that we have here, yeah, the classification um, built into the Um, for the characterization, um, yeah, here we translate in an LCA the elementary flows into the impact scores. Um, yeah, in the social LCA, the social indicators yeah, are the elementary flows. Um, yeah, so we have um, here 
um, yeah, less environmental indicators and then um, less environmental, uh, less elementary um, flows um, than in LLC. Okay. One can have, yeah, one indicator per impact category. Um, yeah, then we do not need a characterization. Um, yeah, this is more intuitive for the decision maker. Um, yeah, however, yeah, sometimes it is difficult to yeah, capture one impact really with one indicator. And then we use several indicators which need to be characterized then and which need further explanations. Yeah. So it's, for example, when we think about working conditions, yeah, which is not only about the temperature and well, cleanliness of um, the environment or so, yeah, but where we have a lot of aspects which are treated. Um, what we do um, here is, uh, yeah, that the characterization um, is usually done at a mid point uh, level um, and often yeah we have a establishment of compound indicators where we score um, yeah individually yeah for example um, yeah violations of ILO conventions um, yeah we look into all the ILO um, international labor organization conventions um, yeah and and always, yeah, a score when we encounter one of these um, parts yeah, and come then to a composite indicator, yeah, grouping and characterizing, yeah, several impacts. Um, on the other side, yeah, we leave, um, yeah, some aspects open and we allow for the compensation, um, yeah, through this single number approach in the end. Um, yeah, so this is when we do a characterization on the midpoint level. At the endpoint level, um, yeah, one uses a measure for the quality of um, life. Yeah, these are, we spoke before about these dailies. Yeah, here we speak about the qualities, um, yeah, the quality adjusted uh, life years, yeah, which are lost. Um, considering yeah, losses of um, life years plus yeah, um, score of years of well-being which are lost, um, yeah, which uh, um, is adjusted yeah, by a constant um, here to account for the impact yeah, at the end of the mechanism, um, yeah, the area of protection um, which is here. Um, the uh, human well-being. Okay, um, we are not through yet, and so I left out um, the. Um, oh, we haven't treated uh, spoken about this um, case study. Um, I would suggest um, that I speak about this case study um, next week. And contrary to the um, announcement which I made on Moodle, I will correct it. Uh, we start regularly at 8.30 and do a small repetition on social LCA and speak about uh, this case study. And um, yeah, at 9.15, we have then the guest talk um, by um, Nathanael Ko. Um, on um, justice and the assessments um, here. Are there any questions left, Mrs. Otterbach? Yeah, I wanted to ask whether we still um, will talk about uncertainties in LCA. Yeah, we have to, to, to clarify this. We get a time problem this um, semester. Um, and the question is um, whether we are able to, um, to discuss um, the uncertainties um, or whether we just um, 
you know, there are whether we um, give you material for self studies, yeah, when you're interested in the um, in this, yeah. But we had the opportunity now with this guest talk, which I did not want to miss, um, and um, we had um, yeah the um, um, the week where we missed yeah one one tutorial. Um, and um, therefore, yeah, we are missing one uh, one slot um, um, currently. Yeah, we will give you information on the uncertainty uh, topic for sure, um, but it will be difficult, yeah, if we do not find the other solution to include it in the regular lecture cycle. Yeah, it would be nice if we could get some recommended literature. Or something. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, this is something we do, of course. Um, yeah, um, there is, um, um, yeah, I, I, we, we speak finally about this, um, yeah, and I will um, inform you about it. Thank you. Upload according literature. Yeah? Okay. I have another question. Yeah, please. Um, last time we asked Rosina um, how the exam will be. Mm -hmm. The only answer she said is we we'll complete uh, exercise tutorial and the lecture. But could you give us more information? For example, how much calculations do we need to prepare and how much stuff we need to we'll just just to learn? Yeah. Um, I don't give any percentages um, also. Um, yeah, so um, Life cycle and sustainability assessment is a quantitative subject. I just sorry, I just stopped the um, the presentation. Um, yeah, and you did quite some um, calculations, I think, in the um, um, in the tutorial. Yeah, we discussed the one or the other aspect on this um, as well in the in the lecture. Yeah, so this will be part of it. Um, yeah, and then life cycle assessment is a lot about understanding mm -hmm. yeah, what are environmental impacts, what are social impacts, what are economic impacts, yeah, how can we measure them, yeah, how is the method defined, yeah, which terminology is used. Um, and therefore, yeah, this is also an important part of the exam. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, we will also shift a bit. Um, yeah, since we are doing an online examination, we will shift a bit yeah, towards uh, yeah, general comprehension, which has to be applied then yeah, either in discussions of the one or the other aspect or own calculation. Yeah, so we will not have um, our, um, yeah, we will have probably more calculations where you have to transfer, yeah, what you learned, yeah, um, yeah to your own, uh, own approach. Um, yeah, but this is something we can speak about in more detail also, yeah, either next week or the week after when we have a question and answer session. Right. One week before um, um, before the exam, we will have a question and answer session where we can speak about um, yeah, the individual questions we have. Yeah, but everything is relevant. Um, this particular topic is a bit difficult. Um, yeah, usually I say we have a lot. Yeah, or we focus more on. Um, on your own understanding. Yeah, this is something which applies here as well. However, yeah, in life cycle assessment, a lot is yeah, on defined methodology, yeah, which is convention. Um, yeah, and, uh, um, um, and, um, um, and, and defined vocabulary, um, yeah, which is convention um, as well. And therefore, we will have to um, ask questions on this as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess there will be a lot of calculations, so we have to prepare for that, I guess, because yeah. there are so many different calculations we did. 
yeah but um yeah most of the calculations are um yeah multiplications and summations so far especially when you do not treat the uncertainties yeah so this is yeah i think when you understand what this is about um, yeah then this is basic math which you have to apply <clears throat> 